might see the smiles on their face and think that they're just happy to be here. But I hear it's got something to do with their football team. Don't know, just say. We're glad those of you who are joining us online are here as well. We're here to worship the Lord, so stand with me. If you happen to be a guest, we'd love to connect with you.
darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Oh.
Romans 8:37. In all things, we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us, and nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus.
Well, our fall is going so well. I'm so glad our choir is back and the LU singers are here and the orchestra. Praise the Lord. So glad to have you all. Let's give them a big hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know they're happy to be in the presence of the Lord. I don't know about that ball game. It comes and goes, right? Wins and losses. But in, when you're in the presence of the Lord, it is filled with joy. You know, this summer... We've had uh, a great summer. I've enjoyed pastoring more than any other time in my life since we got back to a regular schedule. And then in the fall, we hit the fall uh, really going fast. <laughs> and uh, both in children's ministry and then uh, our young adults took a big trip in September. And uh, our youth have really propelled out of the summer into the, into the fall, congealed together as a really close and strong youth group. And uh, then uh, the other day we had acorns out here that represented things that young people in Appalachia need so we can fill their backpacks with these things. And there were so many acorns out there. They were all over the place. But they were gone after two weeks. People took those acorns and the youth, the, uh, excuse me, the children are packing them tonight to ship out to Appalachia. And so we're having a tremendous fall. And then our branches ministry um, continue to do such good dramas. They just get better and better. And this last one I watched really affected me about outreach. How many of you watched that? And weren't you really touched by the powerful message that was in that branches uh, drama? So glad for them. God's got us hitting on all cylinders as we head into this fall, and I'm so grateful. And I, and I like it. Finally, the LU Orchestra is trying to find a section to sit in. We're finally full in here, almost to the point where we uh, can't hardly get them seated in one section all together. Isn't that a good problem to have? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm so glad our choir's back in here and everybody, because I've got I've got something to share with you, a journey that Dan and I have been on together. Many of you all know Dana's parents have been here. This is a picture from two years ago before the pandemic, the last time we were with them in uh, Christmas, last time I saw them. And then our church has been praying for her dad for a couple of years. Um, a year and a half ago, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And um, Alzheimer's now has reached to the middle stages of her dad's life. And her mother uh, is his caregiver. Those of you who have had experience with Alzheimer's know that it is a slow decline over the years. It is very difficult on a caregiver you say goodbye one day at a time, one piece at a time. Dana's mother has underlying health issues as well, primarily mobility problems. She had a knee replacement surgery on one knee and her body rejected that knee replacement. And it's worse now than it was before the surgery. She's got bone-on-bone -bone knee on the other knee and uh, is not going to have surgery on that, as you can imagine. And there they are in Minnesota. I was praying recently to the Lord, and he showed me an image of Dana's mother. And two things about that image were communicated to me is she is alone and she is struggling. As I came up out of that prayer time, I looked at Dana and said, it's time for us to be 
with your mother. By January, we've got to be in Minnesota. It's not something Dana ever talked to me about, nor did Dana's mother ever talk to Dana about that. Never ask. Her children are more than 700 miles, all three of them, from them. <clears throat> she knows I serve under a call. She respects that very much. As I processed what God showed me in my prayer through Scripture, what came to my mind is when Jesus was on the cross, he looked at his disciple John and said, Behold your mother. When he said that to the apostle John, he knew this, that responsibility for his mother would be with him. And as I process that carefully, that is the conclusion that I've reached for Dana and me. And I shared it with our staff a week and a half ago and gave them time to process it. And then uh, I shared it with the people that I report to, our chairman of deacons and vice chairman of deacons, and then yesterday our uh, personnel committee. And we would appreciate your prayers. So where do we go from here? What do we do now? Well, the answer to that question is to keep doing what we are doing. Hand to the plowshare and let's not look back. Because God has given this church a vision. Jake is not the head of this church. No pastor is. The Lord Jesus Christ is the head of this church. It's his church. He purchased it with his blood. And he is a good shepherd. His sheep will be able to hear his voice. And that is where God wants us to be. And continue the work he's given us to do. And this is, we have an awesome staff that is at this church that works with a wonderful group of volunteers. You saw Pastor Jim and Dan up here today, and they're not going to go anywhere. They are doing what they are doing, and they will continue to do what they are doing. Up on the screen, you saw Pastor Rick up there with a bunch of young people and volunteers who are ministering to kids. They will continue to do what they are doing. And then there is Mr. Willie Klepper who is, manages, works with so many committees. Many of you all are on those committees. And they will keep doing what they do together. And Pastor Michael, who when we brought him here, he took over my responsibilities in the teaching area of the church and gave me some relief and also the young adults. And they will continue to do what they are doing. And then there is Mary Beth, who just got back yesterday from Alabama, a little break. But she and her team, uh, this past summer, I can't remember a time when we baptized more children coming out of Vacation Bible School. She has a wonderful group of volunteers. Now I'm looking back there at Frank Ball, our our volunteer staff person who's in charge of local missions and Sunday school, the backbone of our church. And we're just going to keep doing what we are doing, stay focused on what God has given us to do. Amen, brothers and sisters? Let us hand to the plowshare and let's not look back. And after today... I've got two and a half months here. 
we'll grieve together today and then the next time in the middle of December right before we say goodbye but until then I love you so much and I just want to enjoy I just want to enjoy serving Jesus with you I may never be a senior pastor again and I've never enjoyed it so much And you all are so near and dear, and we trust each other so much. And it is a joy of my life. And so I'm going to give myself a day, and I'm going to give you a day. And then at the end, we'll give each other that time. But until, until then, God's got a lot of work to do still through us, and I so enjoy I so love you. And that's my prayer and desire. Secondly, what do we do is uh, we pray. The personnel committee says next thing on our docket is to pray. Call the church to pray. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be open unto you for whoever asks receives and he who seeks finds and he who knocks the door will be open in due season and in due time and today is the season to pray and ask genuinely and sincerely for God to lead and guide uh, and lead and guide you because ultimately it's a congregational decision about who your next pastor will be. And then those who lead you who are trustworthy and true, our personnel committee. And they serve you and represent you so well. Um, it's a privilege for me to work with them and report to them. They are worthy trustworthy. Um, Missy Perulis and Haley Shoemaker are the chairpersons, and they serve together with Robin Allen and Dale McNutt, um, Keith Letts, uh, Craig Anderson, and Dewey Smith. Amen. And you all are so trustworthy. I know you listen to the Lord, and you will. And may God lead you and guide you. They serve together with Willie Klepper and myself on the team, or ex officio people. And so, anyway, amen. And that brings us to the scripture verse for today that I think is very prophetic, very appropriate, as you all know. Michael and I have been preaching through and teaching through on Facebook the Shaped by the Word series, the New Testament, and day by day, tomorrow's New Testament reading comes from Hebrews chapter 1, and I encourage you for the next two weeks we'll be in Hebrews, and you can join us in daily readings as God, our good shepherd, guides us through. For those who can, if you could stand together with me in honor of God's Word. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven, so he became as much superior to the angels as the name he inherited is superior to theirs." 
Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word to us this morning. You've spoken to us in many times and in various ways through the prophets. But in these last days, you have spoken to us by your son, Jesus, who is a good shepherd to everyone. Everyone who believes and follows will hear your voice, learn from you. We have one rabbi and one teacher, one Father and Lord of all. Thank you, Jesus. You are trustworthy and true. We ask your blessing to expose this word to our heart in such a time as this. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> the book of Hebrews is about God in Christ Jesus who is exhorting discouraged Christians to continue on strong in light of the complete superiority of who he is and what he did for us. The Christians back in that day were discouraged because of the intense persecution they were undergoing. And you'll see in Hebrews exhortations to be encouraged and to continue on and to stand firm in the faith. Why? Because Jesus is superior to the angels, superior to Moses, superior to the prophets, superior to the sacrifices of goats and bulls and lambs, superior to the temple. Jesus is superior and above all, and we are called upon to listen to him. This is how God speaks to us. And we see that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 that we just read, or excuse me, 1-1. One, one. In times past, God has spoken to us through, through the prophets in many ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son Jesus. Everybody has a direct line to heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. And God does not withhold the revealing of his will to everyone who will sincerely seek him with all your heart. You will find God's will and God's strength to do his will because he has given us his spirit to strengthen us, to encourage us and give us courage to carry on. And so no matter what that is, whether it's persecution or whether it's change, transition, or whether that is some challenge that we're facing, a mountain. And so this is, this is what God does. This is how God reveals himself to us, is in the press of life. And he speaks. It says, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. It isn't so much that he brought us a message from the Father, although he did. He is the message from the Father. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. It's all about Jesus. The full revelation of God himself to us is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, as revealed to us in Scripture. It's who he is. And so that's how God speaks is through his Son, Jesus, to us. Charles Stanley wrote a, a book about how to know God's will and how God speaks according to Scripture. And he speaks to us by his Holy Spirit through his Son, Jesus, through his word, through prayer, through his church, and through circumstances. You need the first two always to interpret circumstances and what God is doing around you. And this is absolutely important, but this is how God speaks in Scripture. We see that over and over. But it's always going to be by His Spirit, through His Son, to everyone who's got direct access and genuinely, with full surrender of heart, seek him to know him and to know his will he will withhold 
no good thing from his children. You can mark that down. And so I heard from the Lord. I know that. There is not a doubt in my mind. There can't be a doubt in your mind because you leave so much behind. As a preacher, you've got to fight the call until you know the call. Early on, you got to know it. I heard one word that took me from a wonderful church I'd served at for 17. At the end of December, it'll be 14 here. I heard one word. God spoke to me, Roanoke, and I knew it was God. And I came here, and I have known it's been God. And so this is the word of the Lord. And so everybody who, with all your heart, just seek to know his will and ask sincerely. He will reveal himself to you. He loves to do that. He has a personal relationship with each and every one of us. And his will is, while initially it may have a cross, it always leads to fruit bearing and resurrection and life always this is this is the pattern that is before us and so we see this pattern in mark chapter 9 at the mount of transfiguration and he said to them truly jesus is speaking i some of you are standing here will not taste death before they see that the kingdom of god has come with power and so after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them to a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. See the kingdom of God and all its power? His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice from the cloud, This is my son, whom I love. Listen to who? To him. Why does the Father, out of a cloud, tell all disciples to listen to him? Because he will speak to you. And he and he alone is trustworthy and true. He will guide you, good shepherd, through life. And you will know his will in the season that it is to be. Hallelujah. Jesus is, according to these verses, and I quote, the heir of all things. Jesus is the preeminent one of us all, and we are joint heirs with Jesus of all things. He is the heir of all things, the creator of all things. Through him, all things were made that have been made, and Jesus is exalted here in hebrews jesus is exalted in the father's eyes at the transfiguration jesus is exalted if jesus be lifted up he will draw us near and he will guide us like that good shepherd seen right up there that is who he is the he is the radiance of god's glory in verse three he radiates who God is to everyone. He is the radiance of his glory. He is the exact representation of his being, of God's very own being, of majesty in heaven. He is the sustainer of all things by the word of his power. Everything you see around you, every relationship, every, every cloud, every 600 billion galaxies, have gone galaxies, just everything is sustained by his powerful word. Do you think he is able to guide and lead us? <laughs> Absolutely. This is who he is. He sustains all things by the word of his power, include, 
including our very life, your very life. He gives us breath. Our heart beats because God wills it to beat. We came into this world because God willed you into this world, all things by his love. And this is the word of the Lord. He is the provider of the purification of our sins. We could not purify our own sins. We could not uh, cover up our own sins. Jesus came in our helpless estate and brought the purification that we so desperately needed so that we could come to peace with God and come to a personal relationship with Him. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's all about Him. And so that's how Hebrews starts out, exalting Jesus. And then it goes chapter after chapter saying how how much exalted he is above the angels, Moses, and so forth. In the Mount of Transfiguration, you had Jesus there with Elijah, who represents the prophets, and Moses, which represents the law. They disappear, and Jesus is left. And the Father said, this is my beloved Son. Whom the law and the prophets testify to, listen to him. This is the word of the Lord. And so, the scripture is important, but it is not to be worshipped. The scripture is an instrument of revelation and the tool of the Holy Spirit, sword of the Holy Spirit. And here's how God reveals himself to us through his word. Jesus said to the Pharisees, he said, you search the scriptures and think that in them you have eternal life. Yet it's them that point to me. Scriptures are an instrument of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. The instrument that God uses to bring the light and the revelation and the knowledge of who he is. And Jesus is the radiance of God's glory. Jesus Jesus is the heir of all things, the creator of all things, the radiance of who he is. And this is who Jesus is. It's all about Jesus. Whether it's Hebrews or God the Father, this is what the Word says to us. He is the truth. And so... Um, hallelujah. Now, after he completed his work, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven where Jesus now rules and reigns over all. Now, he's got a rebellion going on in this world against him. You and I were part of that rebellion because the definition of sin is rebellion against God and his commandments. So we were a part of that rebellion, but God is doing a work in this day to redeem those who are under the law and in rebellion against him, to redeem us from the law and bring us back to God through the broken body and the purification of our sins and make us at peace with God. That's the work he's given us to do as a church in Jesus Christ and then to raise them up in the faith. And that's what we aim to do. Therefore, three things that we need to do because of these verses here about extolling, lifting up Jesus. Number one, love and adore Jesus. Just spend part of every day of your life loving and adoring Jesus, and you'll get to know him well. The first act of a revelation of the knowledge of who he is is to fall down and worship Jesus. You don't have to fall down every day. But here's a clear knowledge that you actually know him is you will adore him and love him. And this is the first command. This is our proper response is worship, to love Jesus, to adore him. And I encourage every Christian to spend a portion of every morning and every evening just sitting and adoring Jesus. There's no better way to be renewed than adoring Jesus, just an adoration in your heart, a love in your heart for who he is. 
let him renew you. When we're at rest, God is at work if we're focused on Jesus. At work, we're doing what? Renewing us in him. And he operates through love. So through our love, faith that rises up to Jesus, you'll be renewed every day and strengthened every day. So we love and adore Jesus. Jesus. When I first came here over 13 years ago, 13 years and about eight months ago, the first thing on my agenda, just like it was my first church, I've only served two, two churches. I'll be 60 years old in December. is to teach people to love and adore the blessed name of Jesus. Say his name. Speak his name. Don't be bashful. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of Jesus as you call upon his name. That's where the power is, is in his holy name is then Jesus revealed through his name to people and you receive that we're to pray in the blessed name of Jesus I have been privileged to teach Christian after Christian after Christian after Christian after Christian after Christian to pray in the blessed and wonderful, matchless and holy name above all names, the name of Jesus. That was teaching number one in my ministry here and priority number one when I came here. And for months and years, I taught that and continue to teach that. Christians, we are saved when we say Jesus is a Lord. And we can only say Jesus is Lord truly and genuinely by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the only way. And so there is, therein is the power. Praise the Lord. And uh, we just couldn't... Uh, if you, if you know the redemption that we, that we come through Jesus to pray to the Father, we, we just could never pray any other way except through Jesus. Christians are afraid to use the name of Jesus in the world. It's just a fact. It's not very too uncommon that somebody will use God, refer to God, generic God, like in God we trust. That's the nationalistic God. But when you start calling upon the blessed and wonderful name of Jesus, it's a different response. And I can remember when I was first saved, I was reticent to say his name outside of a church setting um, because you'll get, you'll, you'll get those responses. But I, I've told this church this several times. The way I got over that is I put a big Jesus Save sticker on my on the back of my vehicle, second year of college at university, and pulled into my fraternity after I got baptized, shared my testimony, and I came out with him. Knew this, that I needed, and I did that. I didn't do that for the community. No, 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 I didn't do that for witnessing because that wouldn't be a good witness. The way I drive... <laughs> really... I did it for me. Philemon says, be active in sharing your faith so that you may grow in your faith. I, so I knew, I, I, for me, I just needed to break with it. Just love and adore the blessed and wonderful name of Jesus. We're talking about, he's extolling Jesus here, uh, his son in Hebrews. And then speak his powerful name, the powerful name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. It's been my privilege to pray with people over the years and, and ask Jesus to speak to people. And, oh, he is, not, he is not holding back from speaking to people when we ask him in his powerful name. 
and then living for the glory of his name, the glory of Jesus. It's all about him. And living for who he is is an eternal purpose for which there is no compare. The eternal weight of glory. God is bringing us, growing us up from glory to ever increasing glory as we worship him, serve him, and glorify him in this world through whatever calling God has given on your life. And so one of the songs that our band is going to sing today at our invitation is called I Speak Jesus. I love this song, and it means so much to me. And one of the lines in it says, says I speak Jesus over my family. I speak Jesus over my family. Oh, by the way, I, I didn't tell you. I did tell, the, I did tell the staff, and I did tell the uh, deacon chairmans, and I did tell the personnel committee, but I, I told one other one last night, sweetie little Juliana right here, because she came up to me a few years ago and asked me to go the daddy-daughter dance with her. And that honored me so much, and as you all know, uh, Dan and I have never had children. That's the first. I never thought I'd go to one of them. I always loved it, Jeffrey, when I'd see pictures of you at the daddy-daughter dance. <laughs> now, I shouldn't say it here because you're not to say your sins everywhere, but I coveted that. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, she asked me, and I was the proudest one there. I mean, I was <laughs> proud for myself, <laughs> for her, but um, it's uh, grown over the years, too. So, But anyway, we've all got family, and this prayer that we need to pray, speak Jesus over our family. I know Dan and I are going to be speaking Jesus over our family that we love and cherish, that we're so blessed by. Dana was so blessed by her daddy and is blessed by her daddy. They get on FaceTime and sing hymns. I'll come in from work and they're singing hymns on FaceTime together. And hymns are memorial for, memorable for people right to the time. And so, anyway, we'll speak Jesus over our wonderful family who's been so, such a blessing to us. And I tell her dad, and I, I still do when I talk with him, I tell her dad, and I have told him this for a couple of decades this is not new. Every day of my life, I owe a debt of gratitude to what you did in Dana's life. Every day of my life. Because I get the fruit of his labor and her precious mother's labor. Her daddy is so kind and righteous <laughs> and trained her up as many of you all are today. I'm going to tell you when you get something like that, you, you know that there was a lot of sacrifice that went into that. And so, so we speak Jesus over our family and over our adopted family and over our church family that's so precious so precious I just want you to know what a privilege it is to serve the Lord Jesus with you
Let's be together under the Good Shepherd, speaking Jesus over each other all along the way. And dear Lord, we know then you will guide and you will speak. You are kind and you are good. And you are good all the time. We ask your blessing now on this invitation. As we take your word to us this morning from the Bible. And we speak Jesus. His blessed name. Amen. <laughs> I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus
We got a lot to process, folks. <clears throat> Personnel committee started processing it yesterday, and they decided as a committee the first thing we do is pray. And I want to ask you as a congregation to come alongside your personnel committee and just pray. Process it, grieve, and pray. God has put us on a mission and a vision, and as Pastor Jake just said, we keep doing what we're doing. He's given us a call, just as he's given Jake and Dana a call to care for her parents. He has given us a call as well, and that is to keep spreading his word and building his kingdom. So that's what we do. There will be, obviously, a period of transition. And the personnel committee will come up with a plan, and we will share that plan with you as soon as God reveals it to them. But we will wait on him to reveal that plan. You will be a part of that plan, and there's where your prayers come in. Pray specifically that God reveals his plan for this church to the personnel committee so that we can move forward as a church. In the meantime, we're going to continue to celebrate what God has done through Pastor Jake and Dana here at this church. He's done a lot. I've been here for 12 years on staff, and he's done a lot in my life, and I know he's done a lot in your lives as well. And we will take that, and we will move forward. We will continue to do what we're doing. Jake and Dana, I admire you for following the call that God has given you. As hard as it may be, I admire you both. Thank you for your service, and we look forward to the next two and a half months with you. But we will continue to do what we do, we've been doing, and as we go to Sunday school today, we've got to process through this. But this coming weekend, we have a big weekend, and I say we go into it with joy in our hearts, looking to fellowship together, to play together to pray together. We got a whole weekend planned. It starts Friday night. Um, we're going to have a camp out up here. If you want to camp out, see Walt or Dale McNutt. They, if you got a camper, they'll get you put in place. If you, if you want to bring a tent, bring a tent. But we're going to keep doing what we've been doing, and we're going to celebrate this coming weekend. It can be a time of rejuvenation for us, it can be a time of reflection. It can be a time to grow closer to each other as we pray and figure out what to do from here. So again, in your Sunday school classes, take the time, talk to each other. Grieve, do whatever's necessary. But most of all, pray. Pray for, lead, pray for God's wisdom and discernment for your personnel committee. They've got a huge task ahead of them. So with that... I will close this in prayer and we can be dismissed to Sunday school. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We praise your name. As the song says, we will praise you through the storm. We just thank you. Thank you for where we are. Our foundation is built. It's solid. It's on you and your son, Jesus. So we just ask for guidance as we move forward, as we continue to do what we're doing. Father, we thank you for Jake and Dana. We pray specifically for them as they prepare. They will be transitioning just as we are, and we will pray for them. Father, we thank you and we praise you. 
We ask for your discernment and your guidance. Father, most of all, we thank you for your son Jesus and his love that was spilled out on the cross. And it's in his holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. You're dismissed to Sunday school.